My name is Babagide Ibrahim of uh, BGR8 Kennels. Uh, basically, BGR8 means uh, be great, but it also stands for Bobels, German Shepherds, and Rottweilers. But uh, the basic theme is to be great. Um, before I started doing dogs, I was in uh, the production industry, where mostly I based on entertainment. So I used to do uh, shoots, uh, video shoots, photo shoots for events, uh, TV shows. My story with dogs started in late uh, 2013 after I cleared high school. Uh, back then I was dealing with pets, not uh, basically the security dogs as I am right now. Um, I used to do the multi stereo and uh, they were, they were actually a good breed to have back then. So everybody thought of it as a cool thingy and uh, they used to go for some good cash. So you can imagine leaving high school and you, you're making some chums. Yeah. So after that now I went to campus and um, I was in multimedia studying journalism. Um, uh, after I cleared uh, the university, that's when I came back to do the dog business like professionally and everything. I mostly deal with Bobels, German Shepherds and uh, Rottweilers. And, uh, but of late I've uh, diversified that. I'm having a Belgian Malinois, I'm having the Great Den, and I'm thinking into going into the Caucasian Shepherd. Uh, the reason as to why I have the Belgian Malinois is because I want to enter into security. The security, I want to do a security firm rather than just be a kennel. You cannot feed on Ugali with skuma every day. So basically what I do over here is uh, I feed them on a particular meal like for a week and then the following week I change. So I have uh, chicken products, like the chicken feet, I have the minced chicken, chicken heads, you know, all this kind of stuff. So when you're preparing dog rice or dog food which has rice, uh, it's not like the human rice. So this one we stir, in most cases it has meat. So you keep stirring for you to be able to have like all the parts evenly cooked. Okay. So you keep stirring and uh, in case you find the white particles you just know like it's not yet cooked. So you have to add some water and then let it boil for a couple of minutes. Uh, cooking this type of food normally takes like uh, 30 to 1 hour depending on what you have because in most in most cases you have to boil the meat first mm -hmm. and then after you boil the meat you extract the soup and then the second water is what you're going to use to do your rice and then after it's cooked now you can serve them and then pour a bit of uh, the soup yeah. um so this is bobby bobby is 11 months bobby is here for training his training takes 14 days and today is the third he came here without even basic knowledge of anything. So while, while I'm walking with Bobby, he's too jumpy. Like every now and then he's just jumping and playful. But what normally happens is you have to first burn that energy for you to be able to teach him something. But within the three days, Bobby can sit. So for every breeder, for every dog trainer, these are things that you're prepared to, you know, counter because for example you cannot become a soldier and just uh, think you're just gonna shoot at people they will also have to shoot at you <laughs> you understand yeah so what happens is uh, you get that uh, some dogs get crazy others have a high drive like the Malinois I was telling you about even till today we are best of buddies but that dog has a 
80% likelihood of biting me and I know it but I have to I have to always you know like be 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 so firm and you know I have to show him that I am the man around because dogs deal with dominance and from just sniffing into you, they can tell how weak or how you, how strong you are. So Zazu, Zazu is a Belgian Malino, and uh, I really I really got him from a very bad background because I'm a trainer. And one thing I don't recommend. Hey hey, shh, easy. One thing I don't easy. One thing I don't recommend is whooping dogs while training them. So that is why you see he has a low self-esteem. Because any stranger he sees, yes, he's aggressive towards them, but he also sees them as a threat to him. You understand? Because the trainer he had before was beating him up for him to be able to bark and to be aggressive. But he's performing as much as I would want him to do. When I started this, I had nobody to hold my hand. Because what is happening is uh, once you tell somebody of the idea you have to get into this, you know, industry, most people see you as competition even before you rise. So rather than pulling you up, they step on you and make sure you don't, you don't even stand. You understand? But uh, also the thing that you have, you know, like you have to do this, the passion, the perseverance, that is the biggest motivation you can ever give yourself. So that was one of the challenges I faced while starting up. The second challenge uh, we'll talk about uh, is uh, funds. You know, when you're starting any kind of business, you need good money. So for you to get there, you have to take a couple of sacrifices. And these sacrifices are never easy. So I had to quit my job for me to be able to do dog. Because mostly I, I need like my entire time dedicated to them. Because these dogs, apart from just feeding them and, uh, you know, looking, giving them a shelter, there is so much that people don't understand. For you to create a vibe with your dog, you have to spend time with it. They're like kids. You know, you don't just bring kids into the world and you're like, hey, I'll pay your school fees, I'll buy you clothes and that's it. You understand? So you have to spend time with them. You have to exercise them. You have, you have to take walks, you know, like do fun activities, you know, uh, we, we play fetch <laughs> and, and that kind of stuff, yeah. So that, that has also been uh, one of the things I can talk about, uh, funds. And then uh, there is the third thing, the third thing is uh, as a breeder, when it comes to a point where we are to get puppies, there is a disease normally known as pavo. Pavo virus for me, as I told you, like I didn't have any person to hold my hand and show me the direction. So what happened is my Rottweiler gave birth to 10 puppies. And in these 10 puppies, people had booked them. I told you a Rottweiler puppy goes up to 45,000. Yeah. And you can imagine uh, you're losing a two months Rottweiler puppy, not just one, but 10 of them. So you can count the loss yourself. What normally happens is after I train them, now I sell them. So you understand like how I normally handle my money from the dogs, it, it stays in that lane. So I, I, I buy dogs with money that I use to sell dogs. You understand? So I sell and buy because 
every day you aspire to be someone greater and you aspire to be a step forward. You know, like you don't want your yesterday to be your today and your tomorrow. That will be boring. So I sell dogs and then I buy something better. For me to get the Belgian Malinois, I had to sell like three dogs for me to be able to buy that one. So I sold a German Shepherd, I sold two puppies, and then I was able to bring in the, Bel the Belgian Malino. For me to be able to bring in a Great Den here, because a mature Great Den is like, we're talking about 300 to 500 Gs, you know? But this is something that uh, is an investment, because when you get a mature dog like that, it only takes a couple of months, because uh, uh, normally the heat cycle of a dog is two times a year. So I get that great den and uh, I expect it to give birth like two times a year, but I don't, I don't pressure my dog. If she gives birth for me for at least once a year, that's enough for me. So till next year, because I have a couple of females. So you don't wanna put a lot of pressure into the dog and then, you know, her mentality, her physicality, it, it, it actually drains the dog. So you also have to consider that. I use the internet to market my business. I have a website, I have an Instagram page, I have a Facebook page. Most of my clients, I even get them from WhatsApp. You just share your stories, you share what you have and boom, you know, how much? When can I get it? <laughs> it's, it's normally interesting because actually as, as a breeder, the best moment is when you're communicating with a client and they're like, uh, can, you, can you drop it to my place? You know, they just drop the pin and you're like, boom, yeah. This is done business. So you can actually do business from home. Like most of the times I'm just at home and that's how I conduct my business.